When I was in my early 20s, I had always dreaded the thought of the working life. Because whenever I see it in the movies, it's always like so great. You're in a cubicle and you don't have that much freedom to travel. And it's just so dreadful. And I really wanted to prolong my student life as long as possible so that I didn't have to um, get into the working life soon. So what I really wanted to do was just to travel the world and learn languages and explore as much as I can and just have the freedom to do that. But just a little bit of disclaimer though guys, I'm creating this video not with the purpose of showing off or, or rubbing it in your faces because I know that a lot of people are suffering in COVID right now, different types of suffering. And now a lot of you guys are in lockdown and you guys don't have the privilege to do this and I acknowledge my privilege in being able to do this. I just decided that this year I really want to document my process of becoming an online entrepreneur, a digital nomad, and I just wanna create things that I care about with the hopes that it could educate you, it could entertain you, it could inspire you and maybe give you hope from my content, you know? So for those of you who still want to learn English from me, I suggest you follow channel Nine Lingua because there I only upload English tutorial videos in Bahasa Indonesia, so make sure you check it out. So with that aside, I present to you Lisbon. Wait, let's rewind for a sec. Did I say digital nomad? I mean, an online entrepreneur, a digital nomad. What the heck is that? Digital nomads are people who use telecommunications technologies to earn a living and conduct their life in a nomadic manner. So digital nomads are basically just remote workers who are not bound to a specific location to perform their job. So that could be a writer, a web designer, a programmer, a YouTuber like me a ghostwriter, a blogger, an investor, a travel writer, a copywriter, or any other jobs that allow you to work remotely. So my ambition in life right now is to become a digital nomad so that I can work anywhere in the world. Well, I kind of already am a digital nomad. I just need to sustain this lifestyle. As the world is recovering from the pandemic, vaccines are rolling out fast and a lot of borders are starting to open up again. I thought this is my time to make up those months from last year, not spent traveling. So about five years ago, I went on a backpacking trip through Southeast Asia with my two friends. And, and that time I visited six countries within a span of six weeks. So it really was just going from one place to another, exploring, seeing different places and all that. And I thought like that life of constant traveling isn't really what I'm going for. I don't dream of being completely idle or doing nothing or not working because I love my job. I love creating videos. I love writing video scripts. And this is what I want to sustain while I travel. So this is where the digital nomad movement comes into place. But of all the countries that I could go to, why did I choose Portugal? I've been in Portugal since April and I have three weddings here to attend that spreads across a period of three months. So instead of going back and forth to and from the Netherlands to attend these weddings, I might as well just stay in Portugal for a whole three months and, you know, save money. <laughs> when I first arrived in Portugal in April, I stayed in this small city called Santarém. I know a Portuguese family there quite well and that's why I stayed with them for the first six weeks of my stay here just to spend some time with them. But of course, since now I'm in Portugal, I feel like Lisbon deserves a try for at least a month. I've been in Lisbon for about three, four weeks now um, because I don't know, I'm in Portugal. It feels like it would be a waste if I don't spend some time in Lisbon where everything happens, you know, like the, the city, it's, it's the city to be in Portugal. So I decided to book a place for a month in Lisbon so that I could kind of see how it is like to live here as an expat. I don't know if I could consider myself to be an expat because then you kind of have to be registered in a country to be considered an expat, but let's say a digital nomad here in Lisbon. Also, Lisbon keeps coming up in the list of the best countries to be in as a digital nomad, so really it's worth a try. So where do I stay throughout my time in Lisbon? So here in Lisbon, I'm staying at a type of accommodation that is called co-living space. 
So this co-living space is kind of like a term that is relatively new, maybe within the past few years. And it's basically just a shared living space among like-minded people. Usually this co-living space is mostly targeted to digital nomads, or also some expats, internationals, workers, like apartments or hotels or whatever like that. Co-living space really highlights the sense of community. So since I stayed here a month ago in the WhatsApp group, there's always things going on like a movie night, lunch together, dinner together. I think it's a really cool space to be if you want to network, if you want to meet people that are like-minded. I have been quite antisocial to be honest. I feel like since the lockdown a year ago, I'm starting to lose my social skills <laughs> and I really need to brush up on that. But you know, it's not a priority right now. So how does my day-to-day -day look like in Lisbon? It's really just the same as my day-to-day -day if I were back in the Netherlands. It's waking up, have breakfast, maybe if it was filming day, I would go back to the room to film this video. Today's agenda, shoot a video, work, edit my video, and that's it. So I'm gonna put my makeup on and start my day. This is a reason why I'm not a makeup YouTuber because I'm just so terrible at this. I'm not aiming for perfection, I'm aiming for functional. Go to a cafe to work. Hey guys, I'm actually at a cafe slash restaurant to work. I'm actually working on the script for this week's video and for video for the week after. <laughs> the waiter just all me. But um, I'm having a writer's block right now because I've been working here since I think 11.30. So, and it's about 3.30 right now, so I've been working four hours trying to get things out. I did make a lot of progress, but at the moment I'm just having a writer's block. So I think after this, I'm gonna go outside for a walk and to go window shopping a little bit to refresh my mind. And then as usual, in the afternoon, once I start having difficulties focusing, I go for a walk. Living in a new city, at least temporarily, means new places to see new corners to discover, and new points of view to admire. Being in a new environment makes my afternoon walks a whole lot more interesting. To some extent, it probably helps with my creativity. Back home, whenever I go for afternoon walks, it would always be the same street, same corners, same stores, same air. Old routines may be comfortable, but it does get old. And it could sometimes be a bit discouraging, at least for me. That's why it's super refreshing to find myself in a completely new environment. This is something that I highly value and cannot take for granted. And after that, I think I'm gonna go for um, my Portuguese conversation group later around six at a park here in Lisbon. So that's actually quite exciting because I'm kind of in the mood to speak Portuguese right now. And yeah. Now that I'm in Lisbon for a month, do you think I would let go of this perfect opportunity to boost my Portuguese? Hell no! So I went online and found a two week offline Portuguese conversation group here. Every day, the six of us, plus a Portuguese leader, or a buddy as they call it, would meet at a park in the city to talk about different topics. This time, we happen to talk about food. Everyone's favorite okay. topic. Eu muito entusiasmada porque eu amo esta comida. É uma um, comida brasileira, mas é muito comum uh, na restaurantes aqui. But more on learning Portuguese in the next video. I'm back for my walk now. I'm preparing lunch for myself. It's a leftover lunch. It's nothing special. It's just a kebab slash, no, it's biryani rice that I got from two days ago. And it's still pretty good. So, and it, there you go. I, I like to find places where they give out a lot of portion in the food so that I could kind of save it for at least three meals. So I think I bought this two days ago and it's still not finished yet. So I think um, it's, it's a good way to save money. But what about COVID though? So when I first arrived here in April, Portugal was actually the safest and best countries in Western Europe in terms of their COVID cases. Cases were low, things were slowly opening up and um, yeah, things were under control. So it was actually really good to be in Portugal then when a lot of other countries in Western Europe was still in lockdown and the um, infections were relatively higher. But now things in Portugal are getting a little worse, especially here in Lisbon. Now in Lisbon, there's actually a lot more restrictions. There's a curfew at 10.30. Stores and restaurants have to close at 3.30 in the weekends and people are not allowed to get out and enter Lisbon during the weekend. So things are getting a little bit worse. 
but as long as I can have my mobility, I can go to a cafe during the day to work, I can go to the stores in the afternoon for my walk, or just explore other places here in Lisbon, I'm happy. So yeah, I feel like if 20 year old Nyla was here and if she gets to see the kind of life that my 27 year old Nyla is living, I think she would be very happy. I would tell her, I would tell her, don't worry, you're gonna live a life where you're free, you can travel to different places, you're going to have plenty of time to learn languages because it's your career and um, you will be happy. So don't worry about that. But I think it's really cool that I am living in an era where this is possible, where I can work for myself, I can be an online entrepreneur, where I could have the freedom to travel when I can. Of course, with the whole COVID thing, it's a lot more complicated to travel, but you know, I, I'm, I will always try whatever is possible for me to strive for this kind of lifestyle, at least for the next few years. I don't know, maybe in the next few years, I will feel differently. I will want to choose a place to settle down and start a family. But at least at this moment, for the next at least two, three years, this is the kind of lifestyle that I would like to strive for, that I would like to have. So we'll see. Rocks. More rocks. White box. No cider here nor there, but it rhymes.